My name is Kim Ussery, and I have had two abortions, one when I was 18 and another when I was 19, and this is my story. I was dating a guy that was in the military who was a year or two older than me. Um, I felt like I loved him and thought that we were going to get married. He was getting ready to go on a six-month deployment, um, and by his choice, um, he thought the best thing to do was for us to split up while he was gone. Um, and that way he could basically be free to do whatever he wanted to do while he was overseas and then potentially us get back together when he came back. Um, a couple of months after he left, I found out that I was pregnant. Um, and because of our situation and, and where he was and I wasn't going to talk to him while he was gone, um, I didn't know how to even get in touch with him to discuss it with him. Interestingly enough, the, the pro-choice thing, they, people, people say we feel like we have all of these options. I didn't feel like I had any options. Um, I was actually getting ready to go away to college, and so I felt like um, the best thing to do was to just go ahead and have an abortion. Didn't think long and hard about it. I didn't discuss it with my parents, didn't really talk to anybody about it. Um, one person I, I, I did decide to kind of at the last minute because they said that I couldn't go by myself, that I had to um, have somebody drive me. I spoke to my next door neighbor, um, and he, it was a guy that was a good friend of mine. And um, he agreed to take me. And um, the Lord reminded me years later, but that he actually tried to talk me out of it. Um, he was a 17-year-old Catholic boy and um, said that he would do whatever he could to try to help me raise this child um, and, and be there and be supportive, which I thought was really amazing. But I didn't, I didn't even think about all that at the time. Went ahead and went to the clinic. Interestingly enough, um, the way they have it set up at this particular clinic, you go into the front and um, they have you know, a typical waiting area and all of that. And uh, so I was waiting there and um, went ahead and had the abortion. I don't remember anything about it. I, might, I did have um, full anesthesia, so I was completely you know, knocked out, if you will, during that time. And afterwards, they ushered me out um, the back door into the alley. And that's the way they, they do it at this particular clinic. And I remember him picking me up and driving me home. And I um, actually went to his home, which was next door to, to where my parents lived at the time. And they didn't even know I was actually there because I wasn't, had been in his car with him. And um, they gave me antibiotics and all that. And um, again, I didn't remember anything. I just immediately started to block it out. Uh, went away to college, um, got up there, and, and my parents um, didn't know anything about what had, the choice that I had made and what I had done. So when I got up there, I just um, basically guilt just over, just I started to be overcome with guilt. And um, my parents just thought I was going through that typical teenage kind of rebellion thing, I guess. And um, I didn't share anything with them. And so while I was there, I just couldn't cope. Um, I was actually going to a small private school at that time. And they didn't allow you to have a car while you were there for um, like the first year. And so didn't have a car. And most everybody would go out of town on the weekends and party and all this kind of stuff. And I didn't know anybody. And so um, I would literally just spend hours and hours in my room just crying. And... Um, so finally, I couldn't take it anymore, and, and once I was able to actually have a, a vehicle, um, I, got, I just packed up my car one day and left the school. Um, I ended up moving about 45 minutes away from where my parents lived at that time, and uh, never told them what the deal was, and actually specifically didn't get a home phone. This was all before cell phones and all that. Didn't get a home phone because I didn't want them to call me. And um, so the only person I talked to during for this probably seven or eight months time frame was my grandmother. And again, never shared anything with her about the abortion that I had had, but she was always really, you know, supportive of me and just loved me. And, and so I just, um, I would talk to her and she was the only member of my family that I talked to for that period of time. Again, nobody knew what was going on with me. They just thought I was being rebellious. And so fast forward a few months. And so I find myself into another relationship and um, started dating a guy, found out I was pregnant. And again, we had been using protection and all those things. And at this time, I, I decided I was going to you know, have the child and went to the clinic um, to just get you know, some prenatal care and all that kind of stuff. And what ended up happening, um, a couple days later, I found out that he was married. And so again, felt like I had no choice. Um, he's married to someone else. What am I going to do? So I ended up going and, and having another abortion. I've dealt with the pain and guilt of that of, for many years. And praise God, God has brought me to this point, actually brought me to... Um, so that one of the two ladies that are here, one of them standing with me today, 
they, I went to, he led me to an abortion clinic um, one day, just, and I felt like I was just going to go there and stand outside and pray. And he led me to two ladies, and they were holding signs that say, I regret my abortion. And I was just drawn to them. And went over and talked to them. They told me what they were doing there, told me about Silent No More. And they ended up inviting me, um, ended up being a couple months later, to come here last year for the first time. And I held my sign, I regret my abortion. So I'm here, just like all these other men and women, brave men and women, to say I'm silent no more. Yeah.